Hi everyone, and welcome to the channel. I want to start this channel off by introducing to you my Beatles collection. My Beatles collection from the US. Um, these are all first pressings that were released in the United States during the time of Beatlemania um, and when the Beatles were the Beatles. And we're going to start off with introducing the Beatles. Now, some of you are asking, is this really a first pressing? Is this an authentic copy? There's a lot of history behind this album, and I'll go over it real quick with you. So, this is the most counterfeited album of all time. Just flat out. And um, there's ways to know if this is an original pressing or not. And one obvious giveaway is George Harrison's Shadow, which you can see right here. Also, the texture and the tone of the cover. Uh, there's great borders around where the VJ logo is here, where the edging is here. Um, there's, there's obvious borders. Uh, the back of the label, the, the cover itself, has a gloss finish to it, as opposed to just a matte straight um, texture. Actually, has a real like glossy texture, similar to the front cover. And um, the reissue or the counterfeits often will indicate that they're in stereo and not have George Harrison's shadow. There is always exceptions to these rules, but um, if you look at the two pictures side by side, hopefully the, uh, there's no glare here, but it's kind of obvious this is an original, this is a counterfeit. This has been produced much later than this release. Um, all the counterfeits will also have Love Me Do and P.S. I Love You, and they'll say they're uh, stereophonic. They're all using mono um, pressings of the disc. Just a quick backstory of this album. VJ Records originally had the rights to release Beatles music in the United States, but they didn't have the rights for Love Me Do and P.S. I Love You. And when they released this album, they released it because their rights were uh, starting to be handed over to Capitol Records um, once Beatlemania started to get a buzz and uh, uh, they were starting to get more and more popular, Capitol finally said, okay, we're going to release Beatle music. VJ Records, give us all your stuff. And uh, so VJ Records quickly rushed this album together before Capitals, Meet the Beatles could come out by a couple weeks, if that. And um, they had different variations of this label. There's three different ones that are known. This label right here, a blank label with nothing, just a white background, and another label known as the Ads Back, which has 25 different pictures of VJ releases in color, which is basically their insert, um, just printed as a back cover to hide the fact that they were using these two songs. When word got out that Love Me Do and P.S. I Love You were being distributed by VJ, they were slapped with a fine and they eventually went to court with Capitol and eventually got the rights to release this album but without those two songs. We'll go into that later. Just to, uh, to give you an idea, too, of an original pressing versus a counterfeit of this album, the original pressings, as this is, um, will have Introducing the Beatles and the Beatles above the spindle hole. Um, there'll also be a lot less uh, dead wax space between the grooves and the label itself. This is known as the 45 label, uh, lab uh, yeah, 45 label. And um, one thing that's about this label, it's a little bit smaller than the typical VJ label and can often be uh, confused with a counterfeit. So when you're looking at these records, make sure you're not actually looking at a 45 label. For those of you that take this video anywhere, Pause it for this particular spot. If you're at a record shop and you see this, just get, a, get an idea of what this label looks like. You may actually have one of the rare uh, labels that are uh, in the VJ uh, family of releases. The reissues will always have introducing the Beatles above the hole and the Beatles below it. Again, there are exceptions to the rules, but the majority of these releases will have this in this order. There'll also be a lot of dead wax space here, over an inch, uh, and this is the general rule behind that. Um, again, the two side by side, you can kind of tell that the, uh, uh, the, the authentic version uh, has a little bit less dead wax space. There's a couple different variations of this label too. You'll have the oval bracket that you're seeing right here, or the oval style label. You'll have a VJ brackets label, and then you, which is similar to this one right here. 
and then you'll have ones that are just say VJ on it. All of which can be original, it's just uh, there's different variations of that, and I'll go over those in a little bit. The first really fully authentic release of Beatles albums in the United States started with Meet the Beatles uh, by Capitol Records. Capitol originally said no to these guys, but with word of mouth and uh, the VJ label records and Swan and all those guys starting to take off, the releases were starting to sell. V or Capital was really getting into the idea of releasing Beatles music. They had the Beach Boys already were doing very well, Letterman. So uh, the Beatles were just the natural choice. EMI actually owned Capitol Records to begin with, and uh, so this deal was kind of set in stone. And there's a thing to be said about the Capitol American releases in general that um, uh, they're often kind of passed off as um, compilations. The Beatles had a lot to do with this, with these releases, in many ways. Maybe not as much as their British releases in the UK, but they were definitely, uh, they knew that these albums were selling well, selling number one millions of uh, copies per album. So they knew they had a market in the United States that they had to uh, kind of be involved with. And they, 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 May not have been as involved directly with these releases as they were with the UK, but these albums sold by millions, and they definitely affected an entire generation, and uh, they're worthy to be part of the Beatle story. Even if the Beatles are trying to, at this point, kind of um, make the market universal across all countries, these albums were great albums, and they have what's really unique about them is they're actually issuing singles at the time uh, versus just new songs. Um, the Beatles were smart in the UK in releasing their albums uh, and then singles and not putting the two together. The American market knew that hit albums were made with hit songs, and hit songs usually came in the form of singles. So by putting them together, you got really great albums. That formula is certainly true. These albums were all number one. This is a mono release indicated above here with this little dot, this black dot. Uh, there's no indication saying that it's in stereo, so it's definitely a mono release. Um, stereo releases will have stereo above this spot here. I'll go over later releases that, that indicate that. And uh, the backs of these will have either a number three or a number six. Threes were created, manufactured in the East Coast sixes were, were manufactured in the West Coast. There's a couple of different variations of that as well. And I'll go into that later in videos. Okay, this is Meet the Beatles, beautiful looking cover, very similar to With the Beatles. It's the same image really, just uh, tinted a little bit. No producer credit at the bottom here of the original pressings. Later pressings put uh, produced by George Martin. And there's different tones above here too in later pressings. I'll go over that later. Uh, a typical Capitol album label looks like this. There's no uh, large white text down here that say subsidiaries of something and so forth. The original pressings usually look like this. Uh, the first pressing of Meet the Beatles doesn't list BMI or ASCAP, as this does not. This is the first pressing. Um, that would eventually be changed once they, once Capitol was able to breathe and say, okay, well, let's fix all of our mistakes now that we've put this record out. And we've gotten Beatlemania off to a start. <clears throat> Here's the same album in stereo. This is a West Coast pressing. And uh, you can see the West Coast, uh, or you can see the uh, stereo label right there. Again, stereo, but uh, has a, a black dot here. Um, eventually, that black dot will be split in two to indicate that it's a stereo release, uh, later pressings. The back, again, no George Martin producer credit down here for the first pressings. That would change in later pressings, as we were talking about earlier. And any capital uh, record that was in stereo would indicate that it's in stereo by putting stereo in the uh, left side. So, there you go. so let's get on with this. Introducing the Beatles again. What's going on here? Well, once the once VJ Records got the rights to uh, release this album, they had to change the order. Love Me Do and P.S. I Love You became Ask Me Why and Please Please Me. Most of you know about this, but let's get into a little bit more of the story of uh, what you might not know. So there's different variations of version 2, as there are with version 1. Uh, with version 2's variants, Please Please Me has 
please, comma, please, in some versions of the uh, authentic label. Again, glossy front, glossy back, George Harrison shadow, nice texture, uh, no cropping. There's enough, there's a lot of space between uh, the text and above and the sides. It doesn't look like it's cropped up. The picture is just beautiful. This is a really nice copy of this. Um, this is the more common found copy uh, version of, uh, of introducing the Beatles. You find these usually on eBay for about 40 to 50 bucks nowadays. The other ones go up for considerable more. Um, here's the other version of that, again, with somebody's name. Uh, again, the shadow, glossy texture to it, texture on the back. Please please me without the comma. It's the other variation of this uh, release. Um, and there's other variations of the labels themselves. You have uh, the center uh, releases. Again, introducing the Beatles above, with the Beatles above the, uh, the center hole. Um, VJ Records in brackets, a different variation there. So that's, a, that's a, an original pressing of version 2, followed by another variation of the same album. Again, here's uh, the brackets with introducing the Beatles and the Beatles above the, uh, uh, the, cil the, 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 cil the center hole. Again, the, uh, the space of the track and the uh, label itself is less than an inch. And another great sign to know that the album is original is just play it. If it sounds like it was minted bad, it's counterfeit. Here's another variation of the same version too, now with the um, oval label. Again, introducing the Beatles and the Beatles above the, the center hole. And uh, somebody's, somebody's name on there. <laughs> okay. But now we're back to the Capitol labels, or Capitol Records uh, releases. Beatles' second album. Beatles... Third album at this point? We don't know. Capital is not putting VJ in the, uh, the, the Beatles canon at this point, of course. Uh, so this is the Beatles' uh, second album in mono. Again, the mono dot up there. Nice little back to it. It's the front. <clears throat> Beatles' second album in stereo. There's a back to it as well. Again, the stereo uh, releases at this time still use a, a full black dot that you're seeing right there. Uh, I'll point out when they actually split up. Here's A Hard Day's Night, which was released by the United Artists um, that had the rights to the movie. And this came out before A uh, Hard Day's Night, uh, the album released in the UK. So this is actually the first release of this. There's some instrumentals that were featured on the movie. This is the only time that a uh, Beatles album would be released outside of Capitol while Capitol owned the rights to them. Here's Capitol's version of A Hard Day's Night, which is taking songs from A Hard Day's Night and a couple other singles. Um, an honest copy. This is in mono. Here's a stereo version of that. Beautiful copy of that. This is actually a picture of them, of the boys... Uh, while they were on the Ed Sullivan Show. It's back to that. Again, all stereo releases will be indicated above here. Mono ones don't mention uh, mono or stereo. Here's a Beatles story, which is a two-disc collection. Uh, features some photos and uh, poster stuff inside of it, I believe. And uh, kind of a gimmick, but if I was a Beatles fan back in the day, I would have bought it. I'm a Beatles fan today, and I bought it. Beatles 65 in mono. The early versions of this release actually are a little lighter tone. Later releases, as this stereo version right here shows, are a little darker. You can see the two first pressings, later pressings. Backs are the same. Um, and then what's unique about this is this is where that dot that I'm talking about gets split into two when we're talking about stereo records. Early Beatles, essentially uh, introducing the Beatles, but uh, released through Capitol. This picture is nice. It's, uh, it's actually the picture of the back cover of Beatles for Sale in the UK. So it's uh, not much new there, just early release. Here's a stereo release of that. Nice. 
of course, with Capitol, you would get pictures of other great albums of the Beatles to, uh, to search for in your local record shop to make sure that you bought all the Beatle records that were out at the time. Here's Beatles 6. Early versions of this do not list the song order correctly. Um, later ones uh, correct the order. Here's a stereo version of that. And again, what they're actually uh, doing in this picture is cutting a cake. Uh, if you search for this online, if you Google this picture nowadays, you'll see the full image and they're actually holding a knife together, cutting a cake. Great cover, though. Here's the original motion picture soundtrack of Help, which Capitol got the rights to this time around. Many more pictures of the Beatles albums back here. Nice picture of the Beatles in uh, Hawaii, I believe. Rob the Soul. <laughs> hey! American version. Many artists consider this the definitive version of Rubber Soul. It's got that folk sound that uh, the Capitol put slapped together and kind of created the, uh, the folk version of this. British version of this is great too. But this has got a little bit more of a folk sound to it that influenced a lot of artists and uh, would influence Brian Wilson of the Beach Boys for Pet Sounds. It's a mono release. Stereo release. First pressings of the uh, stereo version actually have the indication that the album's in stereo within the picture itself and not in the white above. Later pressings take that new and improved full dimension stereo uh, uh, text and put it in the white area so it's more legible. Yesterday and Today, this is not a uh, Butcher cover release but it's a beautiful release that came out right after that. Um, it's called the trunk cover because the initial release had the picture of the Beatles with butcher gear on, some meat slapped over them, baby dolls all over the place. I don't know if they had knives. They probably didn't have knives. It would have been completed with knives. Thank God they didn't have knives. <laughs> um, and it got out and Capitol was like, no, nah, that's, that's not going to work. So the Beatles took a picture, uh, put Paul in a trunk, clearly not as happy as they were in the silly and ridiculous butcher cover, but uh, great picture nonetheless, kind of interesting. Here's the back listing. Revolver, monocopy. I have monocopies of most of these later uh, releases, well at least for these two anyway, because uh, I just lost interest in trying to find mono versions and stereo versions of every uh, Beatle album. I've got so many copies of albums, of Beatle albums, that I just, I got to a point where I said I can't have every copy of everything. I prefer the mono releases anyway. Um, Sgt. Pepper, beautiful uh, mono release. When you bought this album, you would get an insert that you could cut out and uh, put on your face and your clothing or whatever you wanted to do with it. Uh, thank God these survived. <laughs> Not every kid wanted to do that. The inserts, you would get these psychedelic, uh, cool looking insert, inserts. We're still in the Capitol uh, album releases. Here is the same album, Sgt. Pepper, in stereo, as indicated with this yellow band above. This is an honest copy, I've seen some better days. But uh, I'm definitely uh, staying with the uh, original releases as much as I can. Magical Mystery Tour. This is a mono release because the, uh, there's thin, there's less space up here than there is down here. Often with these slicks, the way it was designed, you would have the back cover paste over top to about a quarter of the inch, quarter of an inch all the way around, and then you paste on top of that the actual picture. Um, if it was a mono release, you would have it such like this, and if it was a stereo release, it would be indicated above that. So, of course, mono, they would just slice off the, uh, the stereo topping. Um, in this case, it's just indicated on the side here. So if you're looking for a stereo or a mono copy, uh, you'll find either mono down here or stereo up here. But there won't be any indication between a mono and a stereo copy of these albums other than the space that I'm talking about here. So again, mono has very limited space above, more space below. Stereo copies have more space above 
and a little less space below. It's actually a little bit more evened out, if you can see here. It includes a 24-page full-color picture book. Nice. This is a gatefold release. Um, later pressings remove this altogether with either a purple band in that, split, in that space, and they don't include the book. Now we're getting into what would be the Apple releases. This is the white album. The first pressings of these always are individually numbered in the bottom here, and they have the Beatles uh, slightly raised. And um, comes with the poster, comes with four pictures. I'm not gonna take that out for time's sake right now, but I will show you that at this point, we get into the Apple logos. And the early Apple logos have in the bottom of the label, in white text, a subsidiary of Capital Records. Subsidiary. A subsidiary. I can't talk tonight. But it says Capital Label, Capital Records on the bottom there, with the Capital logo as such. Um, later pressings remove that. Um, I'll explain a little of that in detail later. But the first pressings of that, of the White Album, have that little white text in the bottom there. Here's Yellow Submarine. Um, kind of the soundtrack of the, uh, the movie. Side 1 has Beatles music. Side 2 has George Martin uh, scores from the movie itself. Kind of cool. My favorite album, Abbey Road. I'm looking forward to the 50th anniversary of this. I'm sure they're going to release it. I keep hearing that they're going to do the, uh, the White Album. Uh, the 50th anniversary of the White Album, so. But uh, beautiful record nonetheless. Here's the back. The first pressings of this actually don't include Her Majesty. This is a pressing that came out right after that. And I know that for a fact because the vinyl itself actually doesn't list Her Majesty on the back of it. And it also doesn't have the uh, subsidiary of Capital or whatever that is in, in uh, white text below it. At this point, they remove it all together. All the albums that I've just shown you, all the Capitol albums, will eventually get re-released on Apple. And uh, those are all re-releases around 1970, 1971. This is Hey Jude. No title on the album itself. Uh, if you have a sticker that says Hey Jude on it, hold on to that record, put it in the safe. It's worth a lot. Uh, this one's in pretty good shape, but it doesn't have a sticker, obviously. These are pictures at John's house. They slap together for this uh, uh, album that basically consists of recent singles. Um, not much new music here at this point. Good, good compilation, though. And last but not least is Let It Be. And uh, this was the last official album released by the Beatles while they were releasing new music. This was actually recorded before Abbey Road and was touched up and finished after Abbey Road and then released after Abbey Road. And it's, uh, the original release of this uh, can be found using a record with red, <laughs> red uh, with a red apple on it. There's a lot of speculation behind that. You can Google it, find out. That's basically what that looks like. Anyway, so that's all we have for now. Um, <clears throat> that was just kind of a, a breakdown of the collection of US albums that I have that were uh, Beatle albums that were released from 1964 to 1970. I'm gonna continue uh, these videos with other releases, including individual releases, UK releases, um, solo Beatle material. We have a lot to cover here. And uh, this is just video one of my channel. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you liked it, subscribe. Do all the things that you do with the channels on YouTube that you like. If you have any issues or have any questions, you can always comment below. If you like the movie you can, or the video, you can like it. If you didn't like it, you can not like it. Whatever. We're here to have some fun and enjoy uh, this wonderful music and talk about it. Uh, Till next time, thanks.